So a lot of the times when I've heard about obedience, or when we talk about obedience, so often our minds first jump to the cost. Like, what is that going to cost me? What is, you know, the cost for me or what am I going to lose? And I really believe that the spirit of God wants us to keep our eyes and our hearts fixed on what the gain is in obedience to the Lord. And when we're, when we're, we're cost minded, we're like self-preservative, but when we trust his goodness and his glory and his sovereignty, and we know, Lord, if you're calling me to it, there is gain for myself in ways, spiritually, spiritual life, abundant, but there's also gain for others. His will, his heart is always um, that not just the gospel would come to us, but that it would move through us. And so I've at least seen that a lot of times his call to obedience, um, my yes makes a way for others or blesses others. And this may seem like such a small, Mm -hmm. silly example, but uh, have a lot. I was totally resonating with you when COVID and everything hit our itinerant schedule just stopped. There wasn't, we were no longer a speaker. It was done. Like everything was just sort of (laughs) off the books. And um, I remember sitting there really just before the Lord of God, I, I trust you. And I don't know what this season looks like, but, but have your way. And he began to speak and move in ways. The call to obedience looked very different from what I wanted to fight for from what I wanted, which was Mm -hmm. still, um, how do I make this whole ministry model work where, uh, we're still, you know, striking while the iron's hot and moving forward. And he so rebuked me on that, to be honest. And he (laughs) said, ministry is administering my gospel where I call you and how I call you. And so Mm -hmm. I just sat down with him one day and I said before, um, on a, on a past episode, I have three kids. I have a four-year-old, a two-year-old and a one-year-old. And I just found out that we're expecting our fourth praise God. But we also have a sweet next door neighbor, Maddie, who is six. And we uh, cared for her all through the summer when sort of sub COVID restrictions lifted and her parents had to go back to work. And they're like, what do we do? We don't have family near. Well, then also the schools in this area have gone all digital, the public schools. And so um, I remember it just overwhelmed me one day too to reach out to her mom and say, hey, do do you want us to continue this and facilitate schooling even for your daughter and reached out to other neighbors? It just overwhelmed my heart. The number of families who are in such unique and challenging positions right now. And I'm home. I got nowhere to travel. I've I'm already wrangling the kiddos. And so what's a few more. And we now have seven kids who are in under the roof and it's wild and wonderful, but they have structure. They have help with school. They have, all the things that so many are struggling because they just, especially in the Atlanta area, there's just a lot of families who don't have the ability to juggle all of this and still make ends meet. And I just thought, Lord, your call to an obedience was so invisible in this season. And he just reminded me, that's right. I do holy work in quiet caves. I birthed the savior of the world in a quiet cave that was unseen. I knit together life in the quiet cave of a womb. Like I'm in the prayer closets and the quiet caves. And I'm in this chaotic household where kids are coming from all different backgrounds, but we're worshiping in the morning and we're praying together and they have safety and provision. And he was like, just walk with me. Galatians 525, live by the spirit, stay in step with the spirit. What does that look like season to season? Sometimes we think we know which way to go. And, and the Lord is the one who really directs our steps. And so sometimes radical obedience can look really small, really hidden, really unseen. And I think um, he says, good job, because that then blesses others as well. And our life should be laid down for that, you know, by whatever means. And so that's been really cool to see because I used I like the radical that then results in big. And he's like, go wrangle all the tiny humans. <laughs> Hi everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. Thanks for being a part of our Better Together community.